All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. My name is Grace Sullivan Zirkel. I serve as the Associate Director for New Student and Family Programs, which means not only does my office have the privilege of onboarding your new students to Duke, um, but we also get to walk with you over the next four years um, or fewer if we have transfer families on as you support your student um, in their journey at Duke. So we're excited to be here tonight for our second parent and family orientation session titled Student Safety, um, Security and Support in the Duke Community. And I'm really honored to be here with colleagues from across campus, specifically the um, Duke University Police Department, Duke Reach, and the Office of, um, oh my goodness, Community Standards, <laughs> Student Conduct and Community Standards, um, to talk with you all about what that looks like on Duke's campus. But before I get there, I'm going to do a few housekeeping items for you all. Um, so hopefully Zoom is familiar, but if not, just so you all know the way that we're going to run this, we do have the Q&A feature on. So if you have questions throughout the session, please feel free to put those questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And we'll get to those maybe throughout the presentation, but certainly we'll have time at the end um, if there's still lingering questions. Uh, mostly we're going to try to answer those questions live so that you can hear them and sort of hear the, the conversation about them. And then also those who are watching our recording will be able to hear those responses as well. Um, we do ask for all of your comments and questions to go through Q&A instead of chat. It's just easier for us to manage one feed instead of two um, with so many families on. And then as I referenced, um, this webinar is being recorded. So we just like to give that disclaimer. That also means that you can revisit it in a few days if you remember the amazing wisdom that our colleagues shared but can't remember the exact phrasing or the exact website, you can log back on and watch this recording. We just ask for you to give us about 48 to 72 hours to get it online, transcribe it, make sure it's accessible. And just as a plug, we do have more sessions coming up for our first year in transfer families as part of orientation. Um, on July 25th, we have our Pratt family welcome. So anyone whose student is in Pratt School of Engineering. And then on August 3rd, we've got a similar session for anyone whose student is in Trinity College of Arts and Sciences. And then on Wednesday, August 9th, we have a session for both families and new students, which is about preparing for move-in and orientation um, at six o'clock if you're a first-year family and seven o'clock if you're a transfer family. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and I am going to kick this off by asking, I'm going to ask some questions of our colleagues. We're going to do some rounds and I'm going to start by having them introduce themselves, who they are, what their role is um, and what their office does. So that's sort of how we'll do introductions. Um, and for order, I'm going to start with our DUPD, then we'll go to Duke Reach and then the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. So Aaron, kick us off. Sounds good, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, welcome everyone, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, again, my name is Aaron Perka with Duke University Police Department. Uh, my current role is with our Crime Prevention Unit. Uh, so I've been with Duke um, Police Department for 10 years now. I, I was working as a police officer, but I moved over to a, a more of a community liaison type role or community relations type role. So my primary focus is uh, offering education uh, trainings for faculty, staff, and students. Uh, so we go out and do a lot of presentations, especially that's focused around uh, safety in general. Uh, then we also do a lot of uh, events with the students, faculty, and staff as well. So uh, as you saw, there's some orientation events coming up. So I will be involved in those, uh, handing out some uh, safety information and some uh, promotional items for our Duke Police Department. Uh, that has uh, more resource um, uh, numbers, which are associated with the others involved in this uh, meeting as well, or this session as well. And then um, we also do, a, so a lot of the events that we do with the, with the students, we do grill outs with the students, movie nights with the students. Uh, we work closely with the RAs and the RCs on campus uh, to help host these events and get a, a nice gathering with the students to help build that uh, relation and, and overall safety on campus as well. Uh, we also uh, do some off-campus, uh, close off-campus areas uh, that 
a lot of the off-campus uh, students live at. So we reach out to those areas as well to make sure that there's safety in those areas and to uh, uh, work with the management in those areas as well um, to make sure that that's a safe community for the for the Duke students, Duke family really uh, to be living. Uh, we really care about those areas too. So pass it off to uh, Captain Greg Stotzenberg next. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, yeah, my name's Captain Greg Stotzenberg. I've been at Duke University Police for 25 years. And uh, my role is over our investigations team, as well as crime prevention. And uh, Aaron and several of our crime prevention uh, guys are great. They really believe in community engagement. Uh, there's a much, how much better can we uh, instruct and educate students on how to be safe by getting in their lives and being involved with them and being open and available for questions. And Aaron and those guys are great at that. And so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, but I, I welcome you. Uh, Duke's one of the best kept secrets, and uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed my career here, and, and I know your students will have a great uh, experience as well. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Peacock, and I am director of Duke Reach, which is a case management office here on campus. Um, higher education case management um, is really the, the, the role, the goal that we have is to connect students to resources both on and off campus. And Duke Reach actually was one of the first um, established and fully functional higher ed case management offices. So it's really exciting um, to be here in this role and to speak with you about our services this evening. Um, so basically what we do is receive referrals um, of students who are maybe um, exhibiting concerning or threatening behavior, or perhaps they're experiencing some sort of an issue that is um, posing a barrier to their success or a challenge. Um, so this could be anything from um, interpersonal conflicts, really anything that is interfering with their progress. And um, we assess the situation and then we'll refer that student um, to an appropriate resource. So we, re we receive referrals um, from other students, family, friends, faculty, and we do have quite a bit of self-referrals as well. Well, um, and kind of where, where else to go. Um, so we will receive the information and then get you to where you need to go next. Um, so we partner um, really at our, the crux of our work is partnering with our campus friends and colleagues. So we work very closely with um, uh, counseling and psychological services and with our friends in DUPD um, just to sort of offer the, that holistic support um, to students in need. Um, but I am happy to, to talk more about our services and thank you so much for joining us this evening. All right. Good evening, everyone. I am Latasha Williams. I am one of the Associate Dean of Students on campus and the Director of the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. Um, and so our office really interfaces with students um, once we believe that they may have made a poor decision, um, whether that's in the classroom with academic misconduct, including plagiarism, cheating, um, or if it's outside of the classroom, um, the college environment, as you may know, uh, presents a number of uh, concerns for college students. Um, as it relates to uh, party culture, um, alcohol use, drug use, um, a number of things both on and off campus. And so when students make a decision to engage in that type of behavior, they may be referred to our office um, to talk with them about their decision making in these incidents. And so our office traditionally has been viewed as kind of the principal's office on a college campus, but really we are an office that's here to educate students about the impact of their decision-making on themselves and on the entire Duke community. Um, so I'm excited to talk with you all this evening um, and to have a conversation. I do want to share that um, in the Duke community, um, we do have what we consider the standard, the Duke community standard. Um, and it's really a set of expectations of behavior that we have for all of our community members, our undergraduate students, our graduate students. 
Um, and we consider parents as partners in upholding this standard. And so I just want to make sure that one of the messages you all hear on this evening is that we consider you partners in your student success. Um, and we are all in this um, together. So I look forward um, to speaking with you all this evening. Thank you all so much. Um, I know in, in all of those introductions, you all referenced partnerships, you all referenced sort of this safety and support, but I want us to spend a little more time talking about that. So we can go in any order, um, but at Duke, we talk a lot about a team or holistic approach to safety and support. So can you expand in greater detail about how your office or your role works with other units on campus to support it? To, su to support student safety and well-being? I can start with that. Um, and Grace, feel free to ask a question or I'll ask me to repeat if you don't catch everything. My connection's glitching a little bit. Um, so as I mentioned, we are um, a, an office who refers students uh, to address any sort of issue that may come up during their time. And so usually what that means is Duke Reach isn't always the entity solving the problem. Most of the time we are gathering the information and then getting the student to the most appropriate resource. Um, and that's why I always say we're a good place to go if you're not sure where to go. We may not solve the issue, but we will definitely um, con connect you with a campus partner that would be more appropriate. So as an example, um, we work with a lot of students who we ultimately refer to CAPS or Counseling and Psychological Services. Um, and so a lot of times students are coming to us first just to determine if that's really what's most appropriate or kind of figure out what they might need. Um, and often we meet with students who do decide that they want to engage in a more long-term clinical um, you know, therapy sessions. And so at that point, we're working to connect them with those colleagues. Um, similarly, we work with our, um, our colleagues in DoWell um, and Student Health and DUPD. Um, essentially, just we, our, our goal is to get the student to um, the person who can ultimately help address that issue. And so we are always working um, very closely with our colleagues to make sure that we're connecting students with the appropriate resource. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, yeah, so we definitely all work together to make sure that the, the students receive and the proper resources that is involved uh, with whatever the issue may be. I know like Latasha mentioned, when it comes to alcohol or related incidences, um, when they when we encounter them in a situation where they have consumed some kind of alcohol or some kind of impairing substance, um, it's not to uh, you know arrest them and take them to downtown. That's not our role. That's not what we want for them. Well, that's why we work with the partners here on campus to make sure that they are receiving the services uh, provided that Duke provides for them as well. Um, instead of going a uh, uh, legal or criminal type route. We, we really want them to um, um, receive the services on campus that is best needed to fit their situation. Um, we also, all of our officers are crisis intervention trained, um, which with that training, it allows us to identify an individual in crisis, uh, what kind of crisis they might be uh, going through, and then what kind of resources we can offer the individual. Uh, so again, that's where the partners um, here on campus that we all work with to make sure, again, those resources are being uh, provided properly to the, uh, the student involved. Yeah, I, I second uh, both my colleagues and all here, um, you know, for the last 25 years at Duke, I cannot tell you, it seems like every day I'm talking to a dean in residential life, Student Conduct, Duke Reach, at CAPS. And uh, they're just seeing, I've never seen a workplace where we work together so hard to see what the best fit uh, for someone is. You know, if, if a student is being stalked or harassed, not only are we working with the victim to get them to counseling, to advise them on options for no contact orders or uh, restraining orders, but then we're also working on trying to corral the behaviors of the offender or the person accused to make sure that everyone's safe, that Duke's safe, that they're, uh, and so that that partnership, that interaction uh, from minor offenses like alcohol to more serious offenses, we're, you know, we're all strategizing together on what's the safest outcome 
uh, and how many different ways can we get there? And so I really appreciate uh, everyone on this call and so many others that we work with um, in other departments. And if I can just share from the Office of Student Conduct perspective, a lot of times when students interact with our office, it's because someone has reported some issue or concern, um, and we invite the student to, to meet with us. Um, so it's not necessarily a voluntary choice for a student to come and meet with us. But I echo my colleagues um, in that when students meet with us, we are really assessing what needs are not being met um, that might be driving a student's behavior. For example, we've already referred often to alcohol consumption. When students meet with us, we talk with them about the decisions that they made to consume alcohol, but also what was their goal in consuming that alcohol? Was it uh, because they wanted to have fun? Was it because it was a social environment and they felt peer pressure? Was it because they were stressed? and overwhelmed with their classes. And based off of the students' responses, we asked that student to go to a particular office um, to receive support in that particular area. So for example, if a student discloses to us that they've consumed alcohol underage as it relates to um, coping with stress, we would refer that student as a part of their conduct requirements to um, the Do Well office on campus. And the Do Well office speaks with students about substance use and harm reduction stat strategies, um, giving students tips on how to party responsibly. And so our office interfaces with students really to educate them on their decision making um, and get them to reflect on ways that they can make decisions differently in the future. And we really use a community approach. Um, I mentioned that the Duke community standard, and I think Emory is going to copy and paste that link into the chat so that you all can access it. Um, but we call it the Duke community standard because it's really a standard that the entire community has for students. And the entire community is interacting with the student um, to help them make um, better decisions. So um, when students meet with the conduct office, it's not really a punitive experience. We aren't here to punish our students. We aren't treating our students as criminals. We're treating it as an educational intervention, um, hopefully to influence the student to make different decisions um, and be referred to the appropriate, um, appropriate office from, from there. So there's a huge amount of collaboration that happens particularly in the conduct office, because it is the responsibility of our entire Duke community um, to hold students accountable and to educate them so that they can be successful. I'm going a little off script, but I wondered if um, Sarah or Tasha could share just a little bit in the context of the dean on roll call, because both of you serve as deans on call. And I think that that is a critical part of the sort of safety and support in responding to crisis in the moment. Could one of you just give a little overview of how that is and how that connects? Sure, yeah. So our Dean on Call rotation is made up of um, a, a rotation of deans who serve on weekends and after hours to address any sort of um, crises or emergencies that may come up with students. Um, and so, um, you know, this is this is something that is separate from, uh, you know, a 911 call. You know, if, if this is a situation that is um, an emergency and life threatening, that would certainly be more appropriate for DUPD. Um, but if there is a student who um, is in crisis and this happens to occur on weekends or after hours, um, that is where the dean on call would work to to connect students to the appropriate resource. So um, it's kind of similar to what Duke Reach does um, in our business hours, which is accepting information and reviewing that information and then getting that student to the right place um, to help address the concern um, and sort of mitigate it until um, the next business day or until the student can be connected um, with a resource next day. Um, Latasha, anything that you want to add to the Dean on call? 
No, I think that's a, a pretty good synopsis. Um, what I will share is that parents should be comforted um, to know that Duke PD and the Dean on Call rotation um, provides 24-hour support for students. And so if there are concerns or, or questions uh, regarding emergencies, whether it's medical emergencies, whether it's missing persons, um, our on-call and Duke PD um, system really um, serves as a support mechanism um, for student um, safety and those emergency concerns. And so um, as you all talk with your students, um, preparing them to come in the fall, um, we encourage you to let them know about the Duke Police Department um, and let them know about the on-call options that they will have. They can always call a housing professional. There's usually a housing member on call and then they can always call Duke PD and both the housing professional and Duke PD have access to the Dean on call information. Um, so that source of support is, is constantly being provided um, for your students. Um, again, because we wanna make sure our students are safe and are successful here um, while at Duke. Thank you all so much for that. Um, these are all going to echo each other, but similarly, what specific messaging do your units share um, with students about well-being and safety? What, what can families expect that their students would receive messaging-wise about safety from your units? Well, I, I, I'll jump in. Uh, so, you know, uh, as Tasha was just saying briefly about the 24-7, you know, uh, unless you hear it or have heard it before, um, you know, we're, our department is a 24 seven department. We've got police um, um, throughout East and West campus and over in the medical center, we've got po both police security and contract security in many visible places like the bus stops. Um, you know, even if it's something like a walk uh, back to the dorm, we'll usually have almost always have someone available um, we've got our own 911 center, and so if you call in any time of the day or night, it can get a hold of our officers. Um, and if I was to ask uh, all those on this call uh, what you think the most, the highest crime rate at Duke is, I imagine 90% of you could guess. And what would be your guess? Property theft. Oh, so we have a lot say, of property bicycle. theft yes. where um, laptops are left in the library while someone goes to get something to eat. And so um, fortunately, we have a very safe environment um, of the small amount of crime we do have. It's usually something like that, where a laptop's left unattended, a cell phone is uh, left out on a bench, those kind of things. But Aaron's group is really good about uh, having a number of programs on how to not be a victim, how to be safe, how to document your serial number. Um, I, I, I'm, I'll hand it off to him. Um, yeah, so uh, during the orientation week, uh, we get involved with that and, and offer those uh, safety information, such as uh, the property theft and to um, uh, make sure you document your items, especially your, your electronics, because uh, those are hot commodities. Uh, not just here at Duke, but just anywhere in general. Um, so how to document those. Uh, so we offer engraving sessions as well as other options to document uh, those electronics. Uh, we also talk about um, propping open doors. Uh, we don't want any students to prop open doors, uh, especially to the residence halls. Um, they're given a uh, access card to those dorms. So it's important to uh, maintain those cards and keep them with you to allow you access. If if somebody does not have access to an area or a dorm, there's no need for them to be in there. Uh, they can access it themselves if they so choose as far as uh, actually having access to those areas. And, and that, they can put that on their phone or their Apple Watch too, mm -hmm. can't they? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, which is a nice resource to have. Uh, we also have over 500 help phones on campus uh, that go directly to a one on one communication with our communication center. And those are available to use, whether it's an emergency situation or a non emergency situation. Um, so there's multiple ways to reach us. Uh, we also have multiple flyers throughout campus uh, about safety. Uh, there's also a safety app 
the Live Safe app, uh, which is something that we highly promote throughout campus um, that will link you to Duke resources uh, to everyone here on this panel, um, to, but also to other resources throughout Duke uh, and websites and just uh, safety tips, personal safety tips in general. Um, as our office also does um, uh, lighting assessments several times a year to make sure everything's working properly. So we work with the the facilities department on campus and the grounds department on campus to make sure um, lighting's working properly to eliminate dark areas throughout campus because it's a it's a lively campus 24 seven and uh, these students uh, they they stay up late to study uh, they meet up with friends so we really want to promote that safe community and, and that's why we do those lighting surveys and work with those other departments to make sure again that lighting's working and to make sure uh, vegetation it looks beautiful but as well as as a safety standard as well on campus that uh, it doesn't provide areas for people to hide out in uh, again we want that safety and security on campus and uh, and uh, with the help of everybody that definitely happens uh, at with, for the Duke community. Um, I'll just share that um, just as parents are having an orientation session um, that this group is a part of, our students are also, as you know, going through orientation. And I think the Office of Student Conduct is scheduled to speak with students, I believe, in August. Um, and one of the things that we'll share is, number one, about the Duke Community Standard, that there is a standard and an expectation that we have for student behavior. Um, but then as it relates to safety and wellness and decision making, there's research um, that about um, student health um, that has been published that states that students who prior to an event or an incident has made a decision um, to do something or to not do something, that those individuals are more likely um, to stick to their commitment. So for example, if there is a student who's made a commitment, before I go out tonight, I'm gonna make sure that I have um, a buddy with me. Uh, before I go out tonight, I'm gonna make sure that I only consume X amount of beverages from a bottle or a can and not um, provided by someone else or an open solo cup. That when students make a commitment beforehand about what they will and will not do, some people call them boundaries. Um, when students create those boundaries for themselves beforehand, they're more likely to stick to them when they get in um, social environments. And that's for uh, social behaviors um, and even sexual behaviors. Um, and so we we really encourage students to have a conversation with their parents, with their friends about what their boundaries are before they go into social environments to make better decisions as it relates to the expectations that we have for students, but also as it relates to their wellness um, and their, their well-being. So I'll share that that's really something the Office of Student Conduct proactively tries to emphasize for students is make a commitment at the beginning of the school year before you go out about what behaviors you will engage in and what behaviors you won't engage in. And you might deviate from that, but research shows that um, students are more likely um, to be committed to those boundaries um, if they set out on the front end um, uh, to keep those boundaries. And I'll just quickly jump in from our perspective in Duke Reach. Um, most of our referrals, uh, the, the, the majority of our referrals are related to mental health. Um, and as we talk about uh, well-being and safety, I like to just sort of normalize first that a certain amount of depression and anxiety are healthy and normal. Um, we all feel anxious from time to time, particularly college it's in itself is um, certainly a source of stress and Duke can be a, a highly competitive environment. And so if you come to our campus and you feel anxious or nervous or out of place, um, there is nothing wrong with you. That is totally normal. Um, however, if you begin to experience, um, you know, challenges doing your day-to-day -day routine, getting out of bed, enjoying things in life that you normally would, 
or if you are observing a friend or someone that you know in that same situation, that's really when it's time to reach out for help. And so I encourage you um, to please don't be afraid to ask questions and ask for help. Asking is free. There's really no downside to it. Um, and so in, in Duke Reach, we really try to encourage students um, really at that first sign of true distress um, when you know that something is off, um, you know, you know yourself better than anyone else. So please um, do not hesitate to reach out and ask about what resources are available to you. We would much rather have that conversation when things start to feel uncomfortable as opposed to when things have really gotten bad and you're in a tough place and it takes a little bit more work, uh, you know, for, for you um, to, to pull yourself out. And so um, I would, again, just encourage you um, to pay attention uh, to, to your feelings and to your habits, and please um, do not hesitate to ask for help or resources um, at that first uh, sign of, of true distress. Thank you all. I do have a final question. It's sort of a wrap up. So I want to deviate for a minute and answer some questions that have come in, which is also me saying to families who are listening, if you have a question about something that's been stated or not stated, this is your time to send it into the chat so that we can discuss it and ask um, some of our experts. One of the hard things about this session is it's about um, the Duke community supporting students, and we are more than just the people that are on this screen. So one of the questions has some connections here, but it's also um, other units on campus. So I'm going to ask it whatever we can answer here, and I can fill in and we can share some more resources if um, needed. But there is a question about um, programming, particularly um, rape aggressive, aggression defensive programming, and if there are opportunities on campus for students to go through and participate in that or something similar. Um, so there is no RAD program on campus, um, but there are, if you're interested or the student's interested, uh, there are programs through the rec center that there are clubs uh, as far as uh, self-defense for verbal, uh, or I'm sorry, not verbal judo, um, for jujitsu, um, for karate. Uh, there's different types of clubs on campus that uh, the students can join. And uh, it's a it's programmed through the the Duke Rec Center Recreation Department, um, but as far as RAD program, uh, that is not offered at, at Duke University. Uh, and I'll just add that um, Duke does have a women's center and counseling services that um, has lots of programming and options. In addition to another office that's not included here, which is the Institutional Equity Office. 99% uh, of our sexual assaults on campus involve uh, lack of consent or consent issues and alcohol. And so a lot of D Wells programming, a lot of student affairs programming, uh, what Tasha was talking about is by making uh, lots of really good early decisions on where you go and going out with friends reduces your risk of violence or sexual assault tremendously. And I know it's hard when students get here, they get distracted and excited. You know, we call it the Duke wall because there's this wall around East campus. But if, you know, if you're going out late at night by yourself, your risk increases. And so letting people know where you go, going with friends and, and the kids get it. Like once they've been to a couple of these programs, you'll look and there'll be like a pack of 10 kids going to dinner, you know? So they, they get it. Um, but then if you add in then also some of Aaron's programmings about how to uh, answer strangers politely, professionally, but with confidence and direction, and then knowing where the boundary is that, no, this is no longer a friendly engagement. This is getting unsafe. And so we do a lot of programmings around those kind of uh, concepts. And I do want to take a moment to highlight uh, Stotts. Well, Greg, we call him Stotts, um, um, just mentioned the Women's Center. And this past semester, the Division of Student Affairs actually created the Gender Violence Prevention and Intervention Center. And so we're very excited um, this upcoming fall to see what program offerings um, that center will create, but um, things like RAD, um, all kinds of education around um, sexual assault, 
consent, um, sexual healthy sexual relationships and boundaries, that office um, will be doing all the prevention education around that. And so we encourage you to visit their website. I don't have the link readily available, but hopefully Grace or Emery can put it in the chat um, because they are already doing great work um, for gender violence prevention and intervention on campus. And we will continue to, to see more programming, signature programs um, from that group um, as we approach uh, the beginning of the fall semester. Thank you all. Um, I'm gonna hand this or direct this question to DUPD in particular, um, but can you all speak about the safety of Durham in the area around campus? Yeah, so overall, um, Durham is like any other city, it's got some crime, um, but overall, Durham's a, a safe place for the students, um, especially when they all work together, uh, what, like what uh, Captain Greg Stotzenberg mentioned, is uh, they do get it and they do travel in groups, so that part helps for sure. Uh, but we work closely with, the, uh, with Durham PD as well, and to make sure that uh, if there is any issue uh, that Duke students are involved in, we get contacted right away. And we also uh, connect with the groups here on campus or the other resources on campus to offer the best resources for those, those students. But, but overall, Durham is a pretty safe place. Again, there are some areas, um, but majority of the areas that the students uh, go to or that we're at least aware of when it comes to downtown or hangout spots, those are all uh, pretty well um, um, safe for the students. And some of those areas even have off-duty officers to uh, roam around in areas, uh, again, for the overall safety of not just the Duke student in those areas, but the Durham community um, um, in those uh, particular spots. So. And I, I, I don't know if you mentioned this, Aaron, but um, Duke PD and Durham Police Department do have um, uh, some participate, some partnership and communication. Um, and I know that uh, our office has worked with with both Duke Police Department and Durham Police Department in response to supporting um, students. Um, so that's something that, again, you can trust that our law enforcement agencies, both on campus and off campus, um, are here to, to keep our communities safe. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to mention there there is um, an assistant dean for off-campus and community housing. And so um, Eleanor Landis, and hopefully that's a link that we can add in the chat as well, is the assistant dean for that office. Um, and she typically interfaces with students after their first year, right, um, when they may decide to live off-campus. Um, and so there is always an, an, an assistant dean or an associate dean under the Dean of Students office that students can go to um, as it relates to issues they may be experiencing, whether it's on campus or off campus. Um, so just wanted to, to mention that resource as well. Great addition, absolutely. Um, if a concern arises, how much is Duke able to share with a family member about their student's concern or concern with their student? I think that response is gonna vary um, for all of us. Um, I'll start and say that it, de it depends. Um, <laughs> it depends on the nature of the concern and um, the, the level of the concern. So um, for example, if we have a safety concern about a student um, that is critical and we are unable to reach the student or we need some partnership in locating the student um, or putting eyes on the student, we may uh, reach out to, to family to, to provide some assistance with that. Um, typically, we prefer that students sign a release to share information with families um, because it is their, their privacy and their, their personal information. Um, but again, uh, we do have some exceptions. If, if there is a critical um, safety concern, often we are reaching out to emergency contacts to um, assist us in, in locating or um, working with a student. Yeah, and also on the larger scale for campus-wide emergencies, um, uh, there's a way we do send out Duke alerts, uh, and there's a way to sign up for Duke alerts, for text alerts, emergency alerts, 
and I can uh, look up that link here in a second. You know, we have uh, the same standards and hold it very um, as a high level priority for clery notifications. Um, uh, but then there is also a lot of cases that are either active or ongoing, um, uh, where it's not necessarily a community safety concern, but we're trying to protect the rights and privacy of the victims involved. And so a lot of times, uh, but we do just like clearly requires uh, daily crime logs, uh, where you can find out the crimes that are occurring on campus. Um, uh, but right, like if it's an emergency, um, we will engage parents as best we can. Uh, and that's usually like to create that partnership, like we talked about earlier, because we find that if a ch uh, student is in crisis, even though they may be technically an adult, they're still your child and you're going to be want to know what's going on and see how you can help. So we, we use that quite often. Um, so from the conduct office, I'll just share that um, typically, again, when students come to, to our office, they aren't always happy to be there um, because it's typically involving a, a decision that they may have made um, they, that might not have lived up to, to our standards. And so um, the information that is reported to our office and discussed with students is confidential information. Um, and if you have haven't heard of the word yet, FERPA, um, which is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Um, it, it's really important to, to uh, keep in mind that according to FERPA, um, the university has to limit um, some information um, out of protection of students' rights and privacy. And usually the way I have this conversation with parents as it relates to conduct is that if your student has made it to this point, um, they've made, been accepted to Duke and they're about to to become a part of our college community, we want you um, to put some faith and trust in the work that you have done um, to raise responsible young adults, right? Um, and so when uh, your young adults interface with our office, we expect uh, for them to be able to be accountable for their own actions. And we expect the majority of our conversation really to be with them about their decision making. And uh, we also keep our conversations with them private and confidential unless they share with us that they would like that information um, shared with you all. And so um, in the cases where students would like um, for a parent to be notified or a parent to be included in a communication regarding um, conduct, um, then we are more than happy to share that information so long as we have the student's permission to do so. And that is a part of our institutional commitment um, to further as a federal regulation um, for us as a higher education institution. So the big message here for me is trust that you've done your good work with your student and that they're going to make some good decisions and we will interact with them as young adults um, and we would expect them to let us know when they want us to share information with you. Perfect. I'm going to add a, a link. There are many links about FERPA. We do have one in our parent family um, blue book. So I'm going to add that here. F FERPA really um, connects to any record that we hold, not just the ones we're talking about. So you might see that too, um, as you read more related to grades or tuition bills, all of that. So just, just know that FERPA encompasses a lot. Um, real quick for DUPD. Do students call 911? Do they call another line How in crisis? What is the number they call? How do they reach you all? So 911 is always a good uh, emergency contact number. However, <laughs> on Duke's campus, if it is a Duke landline phone, it will come directly to Duke police. If it is not a Duke landline phone, it's gonna go to the city of Durham when they've uh, ask you a series of questions and realize that you're on Duke campus, they will reroute the call to Duke police and it will be a delayed, uh, a slight delay in response to the call. Um, but that's the only difference uh, when it comes to 911. 
So that's why we offer multiple resources and why it's important to also have the, the Duke police number, which was uh, uh, posted in the chat of 919-684-2444, that you can call any emergency or non-emergency uh, that comes directly to us. And then uh, also, which was mentioned was the Live Safe app. Uh, through that app, it allows you to text with our dispatch center. So if there's a situation where somebody is not able to make that call, whether it's to the, the 684-2444 number or the 911 number, they can text through that app um, and it comes directly to the Duke Police Department. Um, I will point out that uh, Durham, the, or Durham County, which is where uh, Duke University is located, it, it, you can now text 911. That's a new feature in the last year and a half. Not everybody knows about it, but that is important to know that you can now text 911 uh, in the Durham County area. We're nearing the end. There's a question about briefly discussing alcohol policy on Duke um, in drinking. Maybe I'm gonna start with Tasha. Thanks, Grace. Um, so uh, we want to clarify that the Duke community standard, again, is that set of expectations that we have for students, um, specifically on Duke's campus. Um, the Duke community standard um, supports, obviously, um, our state and federal laws. And so as an umbrella alcohol policy, um, our uh, federal laws around um, uh, that legal drinking age um, also apply in a college community. And so any student that's under 21 is prohibited from possessing or consuming um, alcohol on our campus and even off our campus. If we receive reports of off-campus behavior where a student who was under 21 was drinking our office, will still address that behavior because that student is a part of our Duke community and we still have a standard and an expectation for that behavior. Um, so fe federal and state laws apply. Um, and then I can share with you, uh, our first year students are primarily housed on East Campus. Um, and when you get to, to campus and you drop your students off, it's a tight knit community on East Campus. And we consider um, our residence hall Halls on East Campus um, to be dry residence halls. And what that means is that there is no alcohol permitted on East Campus. On West Campus, for students who are over 21, they may have alcohol, um, but it does not include hard liquor. So students can have beer, they can have White Claw, they can have wine, um, but they may not have um, uh, what we might consider hard hard liquor in the residence halls. And those students who can have alcohol uh, on the West Campus, um, again, need to be over, over 21. And where students live on West Campus, but they're under 21, they are not permitted to have any alcohol. So I, I hope that clarifies that. And again, want to um, plug the Duke Community Standard, where all of this is spelled out in detail um, in that document. All right, this will be the last one before we wrap up. I'm going to expand on this question a little bit, but I think the, the question is really, if I'm worried about my student, I'm trying to get a hold of them, I can't get a hold of them. What is the appropriate response in connecting with Duke to say, I can't reach my student? So they can always call the Duke Police Department, um, and then we will work with the RAs, the RCs, the deans on, on the campus to make sure uh, or to reach out to the students, uh, check their locations, um, check with other contacts that may know where the, the person's located. Um, but majority of the time, there's a, the student studying, they don't have their phone on them or something like that. But uh, we do work uh, with multiple entities on campus to make sure we can uh, uh, reach the student that is uh, that you're trying to reach out to. Uh, so yes, calling the Duke police number uh, is usually the route um, to go. All right, my wrap up question for you all is open, but what else do you think families should know? Um, or what do you want them to be thinking about and talking with their students about before students begin their career here at Duke?
So I'm happy to start. Usually, um, again, um, we consider parents partners um, and the Office of Student Conduct, if I had to give a tip, um, is number one, talk with your student about what the Duke community standard is, that there is an expectation being a part of this community. Um, there's privileges being a part of this community and there's responsibilities being a part of this community. And so please talk with your student about the Duke community standard. They're going to have their session at some point in August. I think it's August 1st. And so um, give them a pop quiz. Did you learn about the Duke community standard while you were on the call? And hopefully the answer will be yes. Um, so talk with them about the Duke community standard and then talk with them about what boundaries they're going to have. So if you're going into your first year of college. Uh, what do you think um, a party will be like? What do you think you would be doing at a party? What expectations do you have of yourself and your friends when you're attending a party? And asking those open-ended questions gets the students' minds thinking about, mm, I don't know, what is that environment going to look like and what decisions am I going to be making in that environment? So please talk with them um, about that. And then again, I just want to reiterate that if your student got accepted into Duke, just take a moment and pat yourself on, on the back. Of course, it's a lot of hard work that they've done, um, but as a parent, as a guardian, there's something that you did right to get them here. And so I would just encourage you to trust that you are sending your young adult um, to an environment that they are ready for. And if we find that there are bumps along the way that they're still learning to occur, um, the Duke community is here, here to catch them and, and support them. Um, so uh, I'll share that much, and I'm happy um, to answer any questions you all might have offline. Um, feel free to Emory to put my email address in the in the chat if you have any additional questions about the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. Yeah, I'll I'll add uh, just one thing. Uh, tell them don't be afraid to call. I can't tell you how many times students or parents have called and they've kind of got in their head that you only call police if some really scary thing happened or a big crime happened. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked through with a student, well, you know, what if my ex-boyfriend shows up on campus and he's been harassing me? Or what is the law? What could have happened if I did this? Uh, and we're, we're oftentimes counseling and supporting more than actually enforcing laws. And so um, we are very lucky to have many experienced officers. We've got a number of officers that have had whole other careers uh, at bigger agencies and have landed at Duke with lots of experience and lots of um, uh, knowledge. And so if we can help impart that knowledge, and even if it's something small, you know, you're at the library and something doesn't seem right, you know, call. Our officers will just show up and be the bad guys to check on that suspicious person and check on that weird uh, thing that's happening. And so uh, don't be afraid to call. Yep, that would be my advice too. Don't be afraid to call, don't be afraid to ask. Um, and communication is key, you know, as a parent, um, I certainly would want to know um, if if my student was in trouble or if something was going on with my student. And so I, I can completely understand um, the desire to have that information. Um, and, and, you know, I would just communicate and ask questions um, and, and pay attention. You know, as I mentioned before, um, if your student feels seems different, they're acting different, um, you know, that's important. Take note of that um, and, and communicate um, early and often. All right, with that, we are going to respect everyone's time. I am gonna say thank you so much to my colleagues here on the screen. I hope our parents and families can see and hear the level of commitment from colleagues all over campus to not only keep your students safe, but really just support them in being the best that they can be um, here while they're at Duke. So thank you so much to our colleagues. For our families, again, this is being recorded. We will post this on our website, the same place that you would have registered for the webinar um, within two to three business days. Um, and we hope we'll see you at our next session. Thank you so much.